Yo, 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 what it do, man? This your boy, North End Floyd, man, and y'all already know what to do. Please like, please subscribe, please share the content. I appreciate y'all for showing love for your boy. I appreciate y'all for subscribing, trying to, you know, help me reach that next plateau to a thousand, five thousand, and such and such and stuff like that. I hope y'all are having a blessed day. But this video we finna talk at, talk about. They saying the moon hollow. How many how many of y'all think the moon hollow out there? Because there's a lot of theorists. There's a lot of people out there that's thinking that the moon hollow. So this video is finna break down. We finna see how true it is. We finna get our opinions off this video and stuff like that. So hey, just sit back, kick back. Let's check out this video. Let's see what they're talking about. Let's see if there's any kind of proof to the moon being hollow. You feel me? No doubt you've heard some of the completely unexplainable stories about the moon. There are the strange structures that made front page news of major news publications, but were then dismissed from all media and mm. even photoshopped out of photos. <laughs> there are the strange lunar wave videos of recent years which seemed to show the moon's image actually jumping as though it were a projected hologram. Damn. And you only need to search YouTube to see hundreds of entirely credible videos of strange lights, flurries, and unidentified flying aircraft departing huh? and landing on the surface of the moon. Well, wow, that's crazy. Yet, the U.S. supposedly quit landing on the moon almost 50 years ago in 1973. Was our every scientific <laughs> question answered? Why are all these credible testimonies ignored or dismissed? Could there be more to that ball in the sky than meets the eye? If you research the moon, you might be surprised. It's reference in ancient history, it's perfect geometrical symmetry, and even astronaut testimonies all seem to point to only one logical conclusion. That our moon is most likely a hollowed out structure and an artificial satellite that was intentionally placed into Earth's orbit only a few hundred thousand years ago. Mm. And that the advanced engineers accomplished this like intending this not only to influence the Earth's biology, but to oversee and control her inhabitants. Hey man. <laughs> the moon seems as natural as the landscape around us. But when you look at all the freakish facts, you'd see what one NASA researcher, Robin Brett, saw. He said, it seems easier to explain the non-existence of the moon than it does to explain its existence. So then, why is that? For starters, no one can explain why the moon is older than the Earth, and older by millions of years. Wow. None of the collision with Earth theories make even a shred of sense. I always said that it makes sense. Yo, Secondly, on everything. If the moon were proportional to the planet it orbits, as other natural... Yo, I always said that it makes sense. How, like, an asteroid or whatever smashed into Earth, created the moon, and it circled around the moon, I mean, Earth, and then it created that distance where, you know, the tidal waves and stuff and all that didn't happen and shit like that. That didn't, that didn't make sense to me, to be honest with you. You know, hey, peep game, y'all. Natural <laughs> satellites are, it would only be 30 miles across. Instead, it's not double, not triple, but over 72 times larger, at 2,160 miles across. No other known natural satellites are a quarter of the size of the planet that they orbit. Hmm. Then there are the craters. The varying diameters of the craters reveal impacts of varying size and force. Mm. They should have created a variety of depth, but instead... The craters all have the same depth. And when astronauts mm. attempted to drill into the craters, they were barely able to penetrate the surface. They also discovered processed metals like brass, mica, and pure titanium, which are not naturally occurring elements. They are created and used for architectural design. 
Where it really gets strange, though, is when you examine the mathematical and geometrical relationship between the sun, moon, and earth, which are so freakishly precise they defy all odds of randomness, with nothing like it in any other known planetary system. For example, the sun is exactly 400 times bigger than the moon, and it's almost 400 times the distance away. But that's just the beginning. Hmm. There are the coincidences oh, around shit. the numbers 366. For the numbers 1092. And then the numbers 273. Hmm. If you calculate the likelihood of this kind of precision in a random creation, the number would be so small it wouldn't fit on the screen. Man, they breaking this bitch down. And it's no music or nothing. It's just like, pay attention. You know what I'm saying? Focus. In the ring, all that shit. Give it your all. Los dos rounds. One of the strangest like that things about the moon is something that we don't even give a second thought something called tidal lock. Frankly, the scientific definition makes it sound very natural. Tidal lock is simply that the moon's rotation exactly matches its orbit. In short, this means against all natural laws, the same side of the moon always faces the planet, and we're prevented from ever seeing the back half, <laughs> yeah, for sure. Also known hey, you know what, man? That is, that you know that that's crazy though. If that is a satellite, it's just straight focus on Earth and what the fuck we got going on. You know, it's like straight front view. Like, hey, we checking y'all out. You know what I'm saying? And the moon doesn't rotate like they say. It's just constantly facing one side of us and shit like that. That's wild. As the dark side of the moon. Yeah, we never seen the dark side of the moon. Explore what the fuck? Explore the universe. With very few exceptions, everything spins, including Earth, whose rotation should be throwing the moon into a furious counterspin. Instead, mm -hmm. somehow, our moon is literally like an all-watching eye that never ceases surveillance of the planet to which it's bound. Mm. Another fact Every astronomer knows it's a one in a trillion chance that a planet's moon would appear exactly the same size as its sun during an eclipse. And, by the way, if you view a full eclipse from space, you'll see this. Look Hell no. Nah. What? What? Then, there's the fact that natural satellites circle That's their planets wild. around the equator. So why does our moon circle a full eclipse from space? You'll see this. Holy shit. <laughs> Is that real? What the fuck? Holy shit. Excuse my language, mom. But damn. Yo. Look familiar? That's wow. Then, there's the fact that natural satellites circle their planets around the equator. So why does our moon circle Earth at a tendency of 5 degrees? The exact distance, elevation, elliptical course, and speed that enabled it to transform life on Earth by creating tidal flow and seasons. All the benefit to life here for sure. So, yep. older, bigger, and lighter in mass than it should be, according to the laws of physics, our moon shouldn't even be here. We know that without the moon, the Earth's orbital revolution would change. It's said that we'd have an unsteady gravitational pull, which would make the planet wobble. So, if it's not a complete anomaly of random luck... How did the moon get here? Mm. Could it have been put there? To find out, we need mm -hmm. to know the truth about our history. Phew, and not surprisingly, guess. the mm -hmm. 
the ancients That's crazy. may have given Damn. us the answer. Well, you Everything. probably didn't get much education about this. I we didn't know. A multitude though. of cultures the world over refer to what is called the time before the moon. Mm. The list of those who have written about this begins with many well-known ancient Greek writers and philosophers, including Aristotle and Plutarch. There's even reference to the time when there was no moon before the cataclysm. What? And certain inhabitants were known as proselenes, which means those that were before the moon. But this expression was used elsewhere. The Colombian legends say, in the earliest times when the moon was not yet in the heavens. In Africa, the Zulu tribe tells the legend that the moon is an egg with its yolk removed, brought here from far away by non-terrestrial dragons who placed it into orbit. The legend says the earth turned over when it was brought here, causing cataclysms and a great flood, nearly wiping out humanity. Could this legend coincide with our current understanding of history, when humanity's population bottlenecked, reducing all races to a single ancestor that geneticists call mitochondrial Eve, somewhere between 150 Man, that was Eve. and 200,000 <laughs> years ago. Oh, Could shit, ancient bro. Earth have experienced these cataclysms as a result of the arrival of this unnatural satellite? Hmm. Would this explain why so many cultures, without any connection to each other, share the same story about our cosmic neighbor? The idea the moon was brought here seems like a stretch. We simply cannot fathom how. Shit, it ain't no stretch. Let's imagine for a moment that the inconceivable is true and that our seemingly natural moon was... This is... Man, bro, this they're breaking is, this bitch down, bro. This is Mars. Mars murder. Is in fact... Yo, you know, even though I thought Moonfall was kind of whack and shit, it's starting to make sense, though, to be honest with you. How the moon is hollow, advanced civilization sent the moon over here to help us survive. And also, I've been doing videos of, like, water planets and stuff, like new exto planets, you know. But if these planets don't have moons like ours, then I don't know how, you know, as far as a species can exist. Because this moon, without the moon, we wouldn't even be existing right now. So now that when they talk about we discovered a new planet like Earth and shit like that, I need to know where, if they have a moon and where this moon is positioned, okay? I don't care if it's just in the Goldilocks zone anymore. I need to know if it has a moon and if the moon is doing the same fucking thing as our moon is doing. If it's doing the same thing, then yeah, I think it's a civilization there. But if not, nah. Not here by a race with methods we have yet to comprehend. Why? Was it merely to create tides and seasons? Might it have anything to do with the humanoid race that was existing here? Anaki. Could the answers be found in the other ancient historical writings of Earth history? Like the Sumerian tablets, which indicate the arrival of an extraterrestrial race who genetically manipulated humans to serve as their slaves here on Earth. Yo, fuck that slave shit, bro. Everything. So there's something strange about the mass of the moon. Shit. Understanding that it's 25% or one-fourth of the Earth's nearly 8,000-mile diameter, how is it possible that the mass of the moon is so much less than Earth, only 1.2% of Earth, when it should be the same ratio as the volume? In 1970... After years of research, two Russian scientists, Vazin and Sherbakov, published an article in Sputnik magazine titled, Is the Moon Creation by Alien Intelligence? Translated, it theorized that the moon is an artificial Earth satellite put into orbit around the Earth by some intelligent beings unknown to ourselves. Based on the sheer logic of its perfect size and orientation, 
They believed the moon was placed in the Earth's orbit ages ago. And they're not alone. In 2006, after decades of research, two Brits, Knight and Butler, also published their research in a book titled Who Built the Moon? Mm -hmm. I might have to check that out. That the absolute perfectly proportional geometry and the sequencing of integers for every aspect of the moon was duplicated by no other body in the solar system. They also discussed the huge but ultra-light mass. In the end, they created a very persuasive conclusion, stating, If higher life only developed on Earth because the moon is exactly what it is and where it is, it becomes irrational to cling to the idea it's a natural object. They say the more likely possibility is the moon was brought here into our orbit and is most likely a hollowed-out planetoid. In November of 1969, the Apollo 12 crew sent their lunar module crashing down onto the moon, God damn, creating an artificial like earthquake about 40 miles from their seismic devices. The ultra-sensitive equipment recorded the crash Bam. and found that the moon rang like a bell for almost 40 minutes, taking almost eight minutes to reach its peak. It was so stunning that NASA decided to try it with an even heavier rocket in their next mission. So Apollo 13's module struck with the equivalent of 11 tons of TNT. Even though the seismic equipment was over 100 miles from the crash site, according to NASA, this time the moon rang like a gong, again reverberating for three full hours within the two-kilometer radius of the landing. The outcome of these experiments are so unpredictable and shocking, most people simply refuse to entertain what they imply. Mm. When you consider the perfect geometry and placement of the moon, the shallow craters, the unique man-made elements, the locked orbit, the hollow reverberation, it becomes pretty obvious that there's a lot more to this story and the moon itself beneath the surface. On November 23rd of 1966, images taken by a manned moon orbiter showed no less than six tall structures on the moon. These images were published in the Washington Post and the L.A. Times, with at least one Boeing scientist claiming they were far too geometric to be natural. Upon study, Soviet space engineer Alexander Abramov noted that this... God, what this man. Does is to bro, bro I promise I'm going to get rid of these fucking... Um... That symbol of the pyramid ads and changes. shit, bro. <laughs> on Since everything, the spires are arranged precisely the same way as the apices of the three great pyramids in Egypt. What? And they cast four perfect 90 degree angle shadows into an eroded pit area. At NASA, Dr. Farouk El Baz, also claiming they could not be natural, revealed they were taller than any building on Earth. NASA, on the other hand, declined to investigate okay. seeing the oh, trick okay. of light and shadow. <laughs> Consequentially, the subject was dropped from the media. But years later, several shots from Apollo 17 showed these same clear, right-angled structures. You may have noticed Photographs of the moon are so unclear, they look like they're from 1912 mm -hmm. and are perfectly deceptive with regard to detail. Yep. In fact, sometimes it seems that photos of the distant planet Mars are clearer than those of the moon. At least until 1994, photographer Jose Escamilla colorized photos taken from a moon orbiter 100 miles away. The effect revealed 
these structural anomalies not otherwise visible in black and white. So, if structures do exist on the moon, who built them? And where are they now? Prior to the first moon landing, Apollo 10 flew around the back of the moon, and their transcripts reveal that they all heard what they called eerie outer space music, like nothing he'd ever heard before. Alien rap music? Sounds which have since been compared to the electromagnetic radio-like sounds recorded by Cassini from inside Saturn's rings. Is that what they heard? NASA dismissed the noise oh, as radio man. waves interacting with the magnetic NASA field. NASA be of the moon. dismissing all kind of but shit, bro. The moon doesn't have a magnetic field like planets do. So, to the question, what created this noise? We Why have a be, new NASA question. be tripping, cuz? Why lie about it? The first Apollo landing on the moon is one of the most triumphant events of late human history. But after the structures were revealed, NASA had to have prepared the astronauts to potentially meet something or someone. During that trip, there were two minutes of video and radio silence when the cameras and recording equipment were said to have simultaneously failed. Of course, this equipment was the most highly advanced at the time and produced reliable recordings without a stitch for the rest of the mission. Years later, close friends and relatives revealed what both Armstrong and Aldrin said had actually happened during those minutes. On leaving the module, Armstrong deliberately switched his communication to the medic line and said, there are other spacecraft here, sir, lined up on the other side of the crater. Yeah, Those I'm, babies are huge. Enormous. They're watching us. Without full disclosure of classified information, no one will ever know the real reason why the astronauts returned to Earth with such strange dispositions, without any indication in their cold expressions of the excitement that one would expect from the first men ever to touch the surface of the moon. It became even more obvious that something was off when they were each interviewed separately. You can easily detect, even without being a body language expert, that something just isn't right. It's uh, a beginning of a young Neil. A new age. Yeah, look how you're looking. Why was Cuz looking like that? Perhaps. The most curious point of all Cuz was looking kind of speech that Armstrong gave 25 years after the landing. There are great ideas undiscovered. Breakthroughs available to those who can remove one of truth's protective layers. There are places to go beyond belief. Truth's protective layers? What? Or who is protecting us from the truth? So if the moon is not solid mass, but a hollow artificial satellite, and there are structures there, certainly there must be evidence of extraterrestrial life somewhere. Of course, only astronauts would know for sure. And not surprisingly, you'll find that early on, they were talking but have become less inclined to reveal their knowledge as the years have passed. Here are a few among many who've revealed what they know. Scott Carpenter of the orbiter Mercury Atlas 7 said, At no time when the astronauts were in space were they alone. There was a constant surveillance by the <laughs> Buzz. <laughs> we watching our motherfuckers. Buzz Aldrin Buzz. Years after his legendary landing, for some reason became reclusive and said, there's a monolith on the moon of Mars. When people find out about that, 
they'll say, who put that there? Bus we'll say that. The first Japanese-American in space, Colonel Lieutenant Onizuka, went so far as to admit he witnessed small, strange-looking creatures, humanoid in shape. They did not look of earthly origin. And then, the sixth astronaut to walk on the moon, Edgar Mitchell, admitted, Yes, there has been ET visitation and may continue to be. There is a lot of evidence that points to a clandestine group. Clandestine. What is the relationship of ET life to this clandestine group Mitchell named? What are they withholding from the rest of us? In the 1950s, the physicist Enrico Fermi pointed out the strange contradiction about alien life. He said that given the vastness of the universe, there should be a high probability that other intelligent civilizations exist. But, he added, there is a total lack of evidence anywhere on Earth or in space. Considering all that's been shared, however, is his statement really true? Is there really no evidence, or just no evidence that you can safely discuss publicly? In That's, fact, yeah. given all the evidence we've listed, can you step back far enough to see the forest through the trees? What is more threatening? Testimonies of people who've experienced unexplainable phenomenon by today's common knowledge? Or must that the real threat be that if you dare to share your story, you could risk being ostracized from everything and everyone you know and love. What's that? Carl Sagan said something very wise about human nature. He recognized when new information challenges our beliefs, it threatens our sense of self and triggers our primal reptilian brain. <laughs> Sagan long reptilian. warned humanity about this, saying... When our illusions about ourselves are challenged, some of us may tend to fly into murderous rages. So let's consider what the real threat is. The new information or our own response to it. We want to believe that if there was any validity to this artificial moon concept, certainly the scientific community would be exploring it, right? Of course, Information as important as extraterrestrial life would never be withheld from public knowledge, <laughs> or would it? On everything According it would. to NASA's Brookings Report, a 1960s discussion of space exploration, public disclosure of E.T. life would, quote, cause the collapse of society and must therefore remain clandestine. And there's that word again, clandestine. Clandestine. Astronaut Edgar Mitchell's description for the hoarders of truth. The evidence is all around you. Dare to explore. Dare to discuss. For until the day disclosure begins, it's safe to say Neil Armstrong's statement may have been slightly off. Rather than one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. It might have been one small step for man, one giant deception for mankind. Damn. That's the hey man, this is a, that hey, is a I'm Joey, and I'm one of the Yo man, this is a dope video. I like the fact that it was no music involved in it. I like the fact that she was very descriptive. She had videos, she had stats, she had facts. Man, this is a dope video, bro. What do y'all think? Y'all think the moon hollow? Because I'm starting to, hey, I'm starting to realize, I'm starting to pay attention, man. Going down this rabbit hole, I'm starting to realize some shit. You know, like I said, if y'all further down this rabbit hole, just reach back, grab me, pull me up so we could go down this hole together, man. But this was a dope video. I liked it. Subscribe to the channel. Subscribe to my channel, too, as well. But in the meantime, man, I'm finna get out of here, man. I hope y'all stay blessed. I hope y'all having a great day, man. Hope y'all continue out there reaching y'all dreams and goals and stuff like that, man. This your boy, North End Floyd, man. And um, you know what I'm saying? I'll see y'all later, man. Peace, blessings, and everything else.